All right, we've got this um, this glow pulsing nicely now. It's a nice slow pulse, which is uh, subtle enough not to be too distracting, but um, frequent enough that we will actually notice that something is happening. If we look down a long corridor of these and we see like every eye sort of pulsing slowly with light, um, it'll look quite good. Now the uh, the next thing that I want to do is just sort of um, even with this normal mapping we can see the sort of the the ridges there but it still has that sort of it's a fairly flat feeling it feels like these these ridges um, are almost sort of just like a couple of centimeters or, or an inch sort of in or out of that surface now if we wanted to give this the illusion that it is um, actually uh, a much deeper relief. Uh, what we can use is a special node and the alpha channel or the the um, what's it called the um, displacement channel that we uh, exported from ZBrush. So the channel that we want is new bump offset. This is one of my favorite channels, uh, one of my favorite nodes. Now, um, we need to plug the alpha from this into this, but we do have a problem in that this side is eventually going to be plugged into here, which means that if we plug from this into this, and then from this into this, we've got a, we've got a loop happening, and that could crash our system. But there's an easy way around it, we just select this, control C, control V, and now we've got a duplicate of this texture. Um, now it only has to really load this um, load this for this material once, so um, it's not adding too much to our overhead, but it does mean that we have got a linear flow here rather than a loop, and it will, the, the system won't complain quite as much about that. So, uh, with the bump offset, I'm just going to plug these into the UVS or the coordinates um, uh, input on our texture samples. And with this texture sample up here, I'm going to plug the alpha into the height value here. Now, um, the difference might be subtle but if you sort of move around the object, you can see that portions which are supposed to be higher or raised up uh, actually appear to sort of stick out a little bit further from our underlying mesh. And uh, like I said, it was to, it's just there to add the suggestion of, uh, of this actually occurring. I'll just drag this back. Now um, we can play with this um, these values a little bit. So uh, at the moment the height ratio is 0 0.05, which I think is a bit low. If we double that to 0.1, you can see a slightly more exaggerated effect. This central ridge particularly seems to sort of stick up and um, and sort of squeeze the pixels on this side a little bit sort of tighter as if this is pushing up into into that view. If we uh, double it again you can really start to see a sort of an effect happening there. Now we don't want to push it too far because if we push it too far we get um, fairly strange or um, Un sort of um, unattractive results. Uh, you can see that there is a sort of um, a warping at this corner here that sort of seems to sort of creep down and back. Uh, you'll also notice that up here our um, our nodules seem to go up and off the screen and uh, are only really visible when we're looking down on the object. And so you can see that we are getting that sort of sliding of um, of pixels that's going a little, perhaps a little bit too far. 
but you can see down in here how this is sort of um, uh, this almost feels like it's got that sort of roundness to it but uh, we will have to take this back so I'll, I'll just take it back to about a value of one and uh, we it doesn't sort of fix all of our problems we have still got sort of that there I might try um, taking the reference plane up a little bit yeah so if we take the reference plane up to something like 0.75 and then take this up to something like 2 yeah we are getting a sort of um, a pretty good effect there now we are getting some very strange results particularly around the uh, the central line here as we uh, as we rotate um, to sort of very extreme angles but um, if this was, say, brickwork, I'd be a bit worried about that. I wouldn't want this sort of um, this sort of distortion to be happening. But because this is a sort of a biological um, entity, some sort of creature that we're inside, I actually don't mind that distortion because it adds this suggestion of movement the sort of um, that we're in some sort of muscular tube that might be pushing us through so I might actually leave it with those values I quite like that so yeah uh, I'm fairly happy with this material um, as it stands um, the uh, yeah, and so what I might do is actually save this out and see how this looks in the level. And so I'll just come up and apply changes to apply changes to original material and its use in the world, and click on that. That's compiled everything. I'll close this out. Now uh, what I'll do is I'll come under this static mesh and I'll open this up in the uh, static mesh browser. Now to apply that new material, I'm just going to make sure that I have it selected. And then in here, uh, I think it's under level of detail, yeah. With the material, I'm just going to use selected material. And there we go, we've applied it to our static mesh. Now we don't have any save button, it just does it automatically. Now if we close this out, we can see that we actually have this object is now updated. And we can see how that looks in the level. So I'm just going to place uh, a couple more of these and just see how they look. So I'll grab that, alt, drag, outer copy, and another one. And I might select a couple of these and I will click the um, space bar to get to rotation and alt rotate out these um, now this is where we need the other windows so drag those back, Alt, uh, tab, sorry, spacebar another couple of times just to change our widget. There we go. And now, let's see how that looks. And in the next video, I'll set up another few uh, copies of this and we'll uh, jump into the game and see how it looks in game.